Welcome! In this video, I will show you how to solve problem 2.2c as it appears in Pesky and Schroeder's Introduction to Quantum Field Theory. Now, the problem asks us to do the following. It says, rewrite the conserved charge, which is the expression that we have right there, in terms of creation and annihilation operators, and evaluate the charge of the particles of each type. So, here, this is a relatively straightforward problem. What we have to do is just plug in each one of the expressions into this expression for the conserved charge, and then take the commutator between the charge and the creation operators for each one of our particles, A and B. So that is what we will do. And I will, of course, be using the results that we found in part 2.2b. I will not be rederiving them. So if you don't know where this comes from, um, you should go back in the playlist and to watch uh, the problem 2.2b, where I just found where this comes from. Again, this is for, for the case of the complex scalar field or the complex Klein-Gordon field. And just a quick reminder, um, I'm streaming on Twitch. You can find the link right here. And if you enjoy the content, you know, check it out, check out my Instagram, check out my Patreon, uh, or maybe consider becoming a channel member. All sorts of support is always very uh, very well received and appreciated. So now, before we actually begin writing, let me ensure to rewrite this expression so that we can replace everything much easier and don't make any silly mistakes. So this charge expression is going to be phi conjugate and now we can rewrite the complex, uh, no, or not complex, sorry, the conjugate uh, momenta for what they are. So the pi conjugate is going to be phi dot and pi is going to be phi dot conjugate and then we have phi. So now all we need to do is plug everything in and it's going to be a bit of a tedious procedure, but there's nothing particularly difficult about what we're going to do. In fact, it's basically the same that we did in part 2.2b. So if you already did that, then you're going to see that this is very, very similar. So first let's write all of our constants outside and keep in mind all these things, it's, it's going to be shared across every single term, so we can factor it out. But keep in mind that now we have two uh, momenta that we need to consider, P and Q, right? One for each one of the field-related elements that are being multiplied. So we also have integral. You don't really need to write down the second integral, but you know, just to make this very uh, orderly, I'm going to do it for now. So D3P, D3Q, and then we have 2 pi cubed. For now, I will write it separately, then I will combine it. 2EP and we also have 2 pi cubed square root of 2EQ. Okay, so those are all of our prefactors. And now we can actually begin writing this down. So phi conjugate is this one right there. So this would be, so open up a nice little parenthesis. So the first one would be phi conjugate. So that is AP dagger e to the i p x. I will denote every first element with p, every second element with q. So a p dagger e to the i p x plus b p e to the minus i p x. And then we multiply this by phi dot, which is this one right there. So we have a factor of minus i e q. Be very careful with that. A q e to the minus i qx minus bq dagger e to the i qx. Okay, so th those are the first two, and now we have to write down the other two. So let's just write here uh, minus, and then we have phi dot conjugate, which is this one, I'm missing a parenthesis. So this would be i e p, and then we multiply a p dagger e to the i p x minus b p e to the minus i p x and now comes the second term which will be q and this is phi so phi is over there so that is a q e to the minus i q x plus b q dagger e to the i q x Okay, so let's now close every parenthesis. And the next step is simply going to be to multiply through. So first of all, all our constants remain the same.
Okay, so now let's just write this prefactor outside and notice that the i right here is going to cancel out with this i and give us a plus sign and also cancel out with this sign and give us a plus sign. So in the end, we're going to have a global plus sign when we are working this part. So let's get rid of this i. So we get d3x over 2. And then we have that i. Okay, so now we have eq, which we now write over here. Maybe I will stick to blue just to make sure that um, it's color coded. And then we got ap dagger. So again, this part may be a bit tedious, but let's go through. We have aq, and this time, unlike the previous video, I will just put the exponentials together right away. So this is e to the i p minus q x. And then we have minus a p dagger b q dagger e to the i p plus q x. Then we have two more terms. So that would be plus b p e to the minus i p x a q e to the minus i q x. Actually, well, I guess I wanted to write them together. So this would be e to the minus. So this would be e to the minus i p plus q x. And yeah, let's just put this together here and continue doing this the way I wanted to do it. Okay. And finally, the last term is going to be minus b p b q dagger e to the minus i p minus q x. So again, the reasoning for why we are grouping them like this is the same as in the previous video. We know that eventually we're going to introduce uh, Dirac Delta uh, to cancel out some of these integrals and to make a connection between P and Q. So that is why it's, it's convenient to group them up like this. Um, okay, so continuing, this minus is now a plus because of what happened to this I squared, right? And then we have uh, this EP and now we multiply through. So that would be a p dagger a q e to the i p minus q x. Next term is a p dagger and then b q dagger e to the i p plus q x. Then we have minus b p a q e to the minus i p plus q x and finally we have minus b p b q dagger e to the minus i p minus q x uh, yes all right so now we can close the parentheses so now just like we did in the previous video we are going to want to factor these things out because we can see that we have a p dagger a q e to the i p minus q x here and also here and we also have this last term which is exactly the same and then we have these two intermediate terms that are the same up to a minus sign so we're going to factor this out now let me quickly copy this part and now we're going to factor this out so we have e q plus e p Right, so they both have the same term, so it's just adding up. And then we have the terms that they share in common, right? So this is a p dagger, a q, e to the i, p minus q, x. And then we have this part, so that would be minus b p, b q dagger, e to the minus i, p minus q, x. And now we have the other part, so we have plus E, and now let's take a look at this. So I guess we can choose which way we want to do this. We could um, take any of them to be positive, the other one to be negative. I'm going to have this just as, let's see, what is the most natural? So they share AP dagger, BP, AP dagger, B, BQ. Um, I guess I'm going to take EP to be positive here. Uh, so EP minus EQ. It doesn't matter. It, it's the same result, but... I just had to choose <laughs> one way of doing it, so I, I'll just do it like this. So EP, um, this is then multiplying AP dagger, BQ dagger, and notice that because of the minus sign, 
in the EQ part, this used to be negative, but now it's positive. So if you actually multiply through, you get back what we had previously. And there we make sure that we uh, are doing this correctly, right? If you multiply this through, you have to get what we had before. And this is E to the I P plus Q X. And then the second part, since I'm factoring this as positive, we get minus B P A Q E to the minus I P plus Q X. Okay. And well, now close parentheses. And now comes the same step as before. Notice that we have D three X. We have e to the i p minus q x. We have 2 pi cubed. What is that? That is the Dirac delta. So what I'm going to do now, I went into more detail in the previous video. I'm assuming you have watched it already. If not, I'll just go through it very quickly. The point here is that the Dirac delta is defined here as in three dimensions as, let's say, p minus q. This is the integral over all of space e to the plus or minus, both are perfectly valid, p minus qx divided by 2 pi cubed. And uh, the Dirac delta for p plus q is the same thing, but the exponent is p plus q. So the point is that what we have here is precisely the Dirac delta. So what we can do is replace these two by Dirac delta of p minus q, and these two by direct delta of p plus q. So that is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now what we want to do is simply to actually apply the direct delta. So what that is going to do is fix or rather force the value of p and q uh, to be the same. So in principle, that's going to just kill the integral over q. I just realized that there's a three missing. How long has that been going on since then? It must have stayed behind when I did the copy paste, but it's all right. Okay, um, so this would be integral d3p. I'm going to say that q now has the value of, well, p in this first part, there's actually a parenthesis missing, and minus p in this part. So we now have to make sure that we do that correctly. So we still have this 2 pi cubed downstairs. And now EP and EQ are the same. I mean, EP and E minus P, they are the same. So this is 1 over 2 EP. And then we have factor of 2 EP. And this thing here is going to be AP dagger, AP minus BP, BP dagger. And then we get the second part. I'm going to change colors here. So this would be plus. And well, I guess we don't really have to go much further than, than this because these two are the same. So we get plus zero times everything else. We don't really need to bother even writing down what that everything else is since we already arrived at that zero there. So what this means then is that our charge here is going to be D3P, 2 pi cubed, 1 over 2, e, well, 1 over 2 EP times 2 EP, that actually cancels out. So we can write it like this. And then we have factor of AP dagger, AP. And remember, just like in the last video, we don't like it when we have BP, BP dagger. We can make sense of it when it is ordered as BP dagger, BP. This way, I mean, the way it currently is, is just harder to interpret. So that's why we're going to use the commutator here to rewrite it. So just like we did in the previous video, this would be commutator of BP, BP dagger, and this would be plus BP dagger, BP. And this is an infinite amount that will not really contribute here, that we are discarding basically. And uh, I'm missing a parenthesis. Yes, one here. So we're just going to get rid of it. And this minus kills that plus. So our end result is precisely this. All right, so this is the charge operator. And there we go. So now for the second part where we want to calculate uh, the actual charge of each one of these particles, what we want to do is basically calculate the commutator of Q with our 
uh, creation operators. So that would be a P dagger, in this case, P prime. Um, since there's already P here, we have to be careful there. And also Q with B P prime dagger. So those are the two commutators that we need to calculate. So the actual value of this commutator will come from what is inside, right? This part will not be particularly relevant there. It, it cancels out with a direct delta that comes up later. I will show you in just a moment. So this commutator would be a P dagger, a P minus BP dagger, BP comma a P prime dagger. So let's now use properties of the commutator so we can split this up. So this would be a P dagger, a P minus, sorry, <laughs> I was supposed to split it up. I didn't. Uh, okay. So this would be comma a P prime dagger. And then we get minus commutator of B P dagger, B P comma a P prime dagger. And now here we're going to use a very important commutator property that we have used many times in the past. And it is that when we have a B comma C, we can write this as a times the commutator of B C plus then we have a comma C and B here on the outside. So this is a very important property. We have used it many times before and we will continue to use it. So, well, let's continue. So we were calculating this a commutator right there. I'm just going to write it like this. So let's separate this. Now this would be a P dagger, a P and comma a P prime dagger. Then we get minus or sorry, plus because of this property, a C. So that would be a P dagger, a P prime dagger. And we still have this a P term remaining. And then we have minus this thing right here, which again, separating it would be B P dagger commuter of B P and a P dagger uh, or rather a P prime dagger. And then we get a minus again, the minus coming from here, uh, a C. So that would be B P dagger comma a P prime dagger and B P. Okay, so just immediately remember that this is zero, this is zero, right? The commutator of B and A in any of their combinations is zero. So that's very important. Another thing that is zero, AP dagger, AP dagger, and also a AP, AP, but we don't have that. But just as a reminder, we saw all these things in the previous video, and it's also very similar to what we had in the real field, even though we just had one particle there, um, but that's very important. So all those are zero. We are just left with this. Now, what was this thing? This is simply the Dirac Delta, right? So a P dagger here, there are some differences in convention. Uh, you may or may not include two pi cube, depending on how you define the integral. But this thing at the end of the day is Delta cubed uh, P minus P prime. So this is what kills the integral and the factor of two pi cubed so that in the end, we end up simply with a P dagger, right? So the actual commutator Q a P prime dagger is simply a P dagger. So that means that the eigenvalue here is simply but Q acting or rather the, the commuter here, it's not really acting directly, but you can think of it as in the case of the eigenvalue, uh, the value of charge here is one. Right, so that's the value of charge here. And in the case, I guess I didn't have to delete it. Right, and what that one means is that it carries one unit of positive charge. Okay, so that's uh, important that we clarify. And now what happens with BP prime? Well, if you look at this, the only difference is that this is BP prime, this is BP prime. So every step is the same, except for this part right there. Right. So that's where we would know it's a difference. So in the case for Q and B P prime dagger, we get a P dagger. So a P dagger, a P comma. Now this would be B P prime dagger. And this is zero plus, And now we have 
a p in dagger comma b p prime dagger a p this is zero then we have minus b p dagger b p comma b p prime dagger now that is not zero and this is the dirac delta right this is the part of the dirac delta but this one minus b p dagger comma b p prime dagger b p this is also zero so in the end all we are left with is simply minus b p prime dagger right after we implement the dirac delta which also kills the integral so from this we see that this commutator q b p prime dagger is simply minus b p prime dagger so what this means is that we have a charge of minus one or rather minus one uh, one unit of negative charge so yeah there we go this was the problem 2.2 c as you can see it wasn't particularly crazy it was rather straightforward all we need to do was understand how to apply the the charge operator here so that we could actually find the value of charge um, so yeah i hope that this video was useful to you if it was please make sure to leave a like on the video comment and subscribe and maybe even consider checking out my twitch stream or my patreon or even become a channel member uh, all support as i mentioned is very much appreciated so i'll see you in another lecture thank you very much for watching